My next movie review will be Big Fish from 2003. I watched this movie with my father after being recommended by him, and I was fascinated by its style of storytelling. Full disclosure, though, I was in a big haze of remembering exact details, so I'll be relying on an alternate source this time. Will Bloom's father, Edward, has always told tall tales to his son, and Will has always been dubious about them until Edward has cancer, and they have a strong connection to relate to his stories this time. While Will is listening with his new wife, Josephine, they learn of the following stories. Edward's encounter with a witch in the 30s who predicts certain people's demise, and then meeting Carl, a friendly farm giant in the 40s. This was within an obscure town named Spectre, and then he ends up befriending a poet and his mayor's daughter, but the town isn't quite suitable, so Edward leaves, not before promising Jenny that he would return. Edward and Carl reunite and visit Calloway Circus in 1948, where Edward falls in love with a beautiful young woman. Carl and Edward get jobs at the circus, where the ringmaster Amos Calloway reveals to Edward one detail about the women at the end of every month. Three years later, Edward discovers that Amos is secretly a werewolf and is attacked by him, but avoids getting shot with a silver bullet by playing fetch until he turns back into human in the morning. Amos, upon returning to normal, reveals the woman's name to be Sandra Templeton and that she attends Auburn University. Edward travels to Auburn, trying to woo Sandra, only to discover that she's already engaged to an old childhood friend of his named Don. Don brutally assaults Edward, prompting Sarah to break off their engagement and marry Edward instead. Not too long after, Don dies of a heart attack, as the witch from the 30s had prophesied. Shortly after, Edward is drafted into the army and sent to fight in the Korean War. He parachutes into the middle of a northern Korean military show and steals important documents and then convinces Siamese twins Ping and Jing to help him go home in exchange for making them celebrities. Upon returning home, Edward becomes a traveling salesman and crosses paths with a man trying to rob a bank, which has zero money. This man ironically ends up becoming rich. In the present, Will investigates the truth behind his father's tales and travels to Spectre. He meets an older Jenny, who explains that in 68, Edward rescued the town from bankruptcy by buying it at an auction and rebuilding it with the help of his friends from Callaway Circus. Will suggests that Jenny had an affair with his father, but she reveals that although she loved Edward, he remained faithful to Sandra. Will returns home, but learns Edward has a stroke and stays with him at the hospital. Edward wakes up, but unable to speak much, explains the entire setting is what he saw in the witch's eye. Will starts to believe him and becomes afraid, but he calms him by narrating what he always guessed Edward saw in the eye. Through struggling, Will tells his father their imaginary escape from the hospital to the nearby river, where everyone from Edward Past is there to see him off. Will carries Edward through the joyful crowd of the river, where Edward transforms into a giant catfish, which has been caught at Will's wedding, swims away. Through telling this story, Will learns to forgive his father, who dies satisfied with his life. At the funeral, Will and Josephine are surprised when all of the people from Edward's stories come to the service, though each one is slightly less mystical than it had been told. He asks for their accounts of Edward's stories, where they confirm the credibility but also fantasize his acts in return. Years later, Will passes on Edward's stories to his own son, helping him become immortal. What really fascinates me about this movie is how the storytelling wraps itself around to bring old characters and events to have more importance later in Edward's life. I had admitted frustration about Will's disbelief towards his father, but to be honest, I was still so focused on the dynamics of magic throughout the narrative. I am aware that this movie has been compared to Forrest Gump for its own style of narratives and perhaps showing the latter's movie's legacy. But I decided to review Big Fish because it isn't mentioned as frequently. Sure, both movies go back in time to display friendship, love, history, and adventure, but I am still confused as to why I haven't heard this movie sooner than a few years ago. Amidst its all-star cast, it's kind of strange how few people are mentioning it nowadays, despite its financial success. $122 million over a $70 million budget. But I can safely say that it's very heartfelt and occasionally sad in a very authentic way, and the settings are well crafted and executed along with the characters and scenes being iconic. 
I was pretty satisfied with what I saw. I'm sure that you will be fascinated by the movie, so check it out. Subscribe, like, and comment for any of my videos.